Good day. Relate to the mole and empirical formulas, we're going to look at hydrated compounds. You know from personal experience that if you're hydrated, it means you have lots of water in your system. If you're dehydrated, you don't have enough water in your system. Well, compounds, and this refers to mainly to ionic compounds, when they crystallize, they may suck in water from their surroundings. And these water molecules will bond typically to the metal of the compound. So if we look at CuSO4.5H2O, that means there's five water molecules surrounding the copper, two plus ion in this case. So first we look at a decomposition of a hydrate, and we'll do a lab related to this where you're going to have an unknown hydrate. You're going to heat it up gently, and you're going to break this bond. That dot there represents five bonds in this case, each bond between the copper 2 plus and one of the water molecules. And when you do this, you drive off the water. Now the reverse of this is if you have what's called an anhydrous salt and there's water in its surroundings, it'll suck the water in and you make the hydrate. So these reactions can go back and forth. When you're doing the hydrate lab, you're going to measure the mass and determine the mass of the hydrate. Then you're going to heat it up repeatedly until the mass doesn't drop any farther. And from that, you can determine the mass of anhydrous salt. And the difference between those two masses will be the mass of the water driven off. And so in that lab, what you're going to be looking for is how many water molecules per formula unit of the salt are present. Now, of course, I won't tell you what the salt is, and that's so you can't just look it up. But using that, you can get the integer, you can get the value of what we call n. And so, important sheet to read so that you're ready for the hydrate lab.